Hi everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm your host, Shannon Rogers, and welcome into my shop. This is the Gramercy Saw Vise. I've been using it basically since it came out. I ordered it at Woodworking in America the year it uh, premiered, I believe in 2009. I use it for all of my saws, everything from my long 28 inch handsaw down to tiny dovetail saws. And I love it. It's an outstanding vise. It does the job it's meant to do. However, I was recently faced with a new challenge. Look in the background, you can see my uh, frame saw there. And was also handed some new blades made by Blackburn Toolworks that came already toothed and I need to sharpen these up. I've got 48 inch long blades and I've got 36 inch long blades. I've got a couple of widths in each one of these blades. So I've got a significant amount of sharpening to do. Obviously this vise will do the job, but in sharpening something like this, you're going to have to shift the blade pretty substantially. And to me, it seemed like a perfect excuse to build a more dedicated saw vise for my larger saws. And that's what I'm going to do today. The design for this vise is really just based off scrap material I have in my shop. I've got a piece of western red cedar here that's 9 inches wide, and I'm just going to mark it at the center point and cut it in half. Go over to the saw bench and just make one cross cut. This vice design is actually seen in Lee Nielsen YouTube videos as Thomas Lee Nielsen sharpens his panel saws. Now I'm going to mark the length of the actual jaws onto some scrap one by one and a half inch white oak. With that length established, I'll mark the rest of my pieces off of that existing one and just saw them right here at the bench hook to get them all pretty close to even. I'm going to need two for the actual jaws that grip the blades and I'm going to need two pieces on the opposite end that will hold the hinges and then finally two pieces to work on the outside to hold it in the vices themselves. Now I'm just going to clean up the edges. I don't really need to shoot them because they don't really have to be perfectly flat or perfectly square. I just want to remove any splinters from the cross cuts and just kind of clean it up so it looks a little bit nicer. Now I'll spread glue on both edges of both jaws and I'll press the white oak parts in place and then just clamp it up. I don't really have to set this aside too long to dry because I'm going to drill and drive cut nails into this. Use my egg beater drill and drill out the pilot holes for these cut nails. White oak is really hard. You're definitely going to want a pilot hole in here. Once you've got some holes drilled, and I drilled just past the white oak into the western red seed, and I really did it, did it by feel. The drilling went much easier in the soft cedar. With your cut nail, you want to line it so it's wedging with the grain and just pound them in place. I put four nails in each of these white oak jaws. And then I just use a nail set to sink the heads beneath the surface. Now I'm going to put the part that holds the blade down so I can get a nice, flat, even surface register on my bench. Clamp it together, mark the holes for the hinges, and then drill all that out. These are just typical uh, hinges from Home Depot. They don't really need to be mortised in place by any means. This is just a shop jig here. So I'll screw that in, get the hinges all firmly in place. And when I take the clamps off, essentially the saw vise is done here. If I were clamping this on a typical front vise, it could rest on the rails of the vise and open and close. But since I'm using leg vises, I'm going to set my square to 5 inches to give me a reference line for these end pieces to go on to. Again, these rails will hold it in the vise. So I glued them on, and since I already had some screws and the screwdriver out, I just decided to go ahead and screw them into place. So I just put clamps on just to hold it temporarily till I could drill pilot holes and then sink my screws. Thank you. 
Every other vise I've made, I've attached leather to the jaws. It's probably not necessary for this because I'm sure the white oak will hold it firmly, but the leather adds a slight stickiness to the vise jaws and it really allows whatever you're holding, it grabs it really, really firmly. I've heard of other people who've used leather on a saw vise, so I'm anxious to try it out here. I didn't have any long leather strips, so I just grabbed some eight and a half by 11 sheets at uh, a Michael's craft store and just cut them into strips like this so that I can lay them on side by side to cover the full 40 inches of this vise. I'm using hot high glue here. I found that that works the best when I'm gluing leather to wood just through experience with several other vices that I've built. Now I'll clamp the whole thing up and I want to clamp it so that the leather is a little bit proud of the surface. I want to trim that later. You can see the leather is just a little bit proud. Now of course I realized the glue might bleed through so I took it apart, put wax paper in between the jaws and then clamped it back up. Once it was dry, I want to trim that leather flush and I'm using a paring chisel here and you can see leaving that leather a little proud makes this really easy to get it flush right with the jaws. Now I'm going to come back with a jack plane and I want to bevel off the edges around this leather so that the top of the vise kind of comes right to a point, to a very subtle crown. This will keep the jaws away from my knuckles but not too far away. Now I'm going to just chamfer off the sharp edges so I don't end up cutting myself as I'm filing my saws. That really completes the build. So you can see I move my sliding leg vise into place and I've got both of my vices set up and this will just drop right in place and we're ready to start filing. Okay, so let's see how this thing works. The bars on the side, let it rest nicely right on top of my leg vices. So let me grab one of the bigger blades here. Let's grab the three inch, 36 inch blade and we can slip it in between the leather. Oh, and I really like this. The leather provides a little bit of stickiness. It wants to slip through this because there's absolutely no grip on this at all, but no. it holds it enough that, you know, it's taken probably 75% of the weight of the blade right now. So it's real easy to adjust this. <laughs> cinch that down a little bit and it's already gripped tight. Oh, that's too tight. All right, with just basically just the vise itself closing this up, I can maneuver this around. That's one of the things I always struggle with with a traditional saw vise is, you know, getting a long blade kind of set at just the right height all the way along it. Here, I've got a tight enough grip with that leather and the vices themselves are not actually clamping on this. They're just kind of holding the jaws together. And I've got it firm here. So just probably a quarter rotation on my vices and I have saw blade is, is, is in there firm. And now, I can shape my teeth. And that's always uh, an indication. Do you get a lot of vibration? A good saw vise is kind of deaden all that vibration. got plenty of clearance here. The, the chamfers on the edges have removed all the sharp edges and the vise comes to a slight crown here. So I'm not hitting my knuckles or anything like that. This is, uh, this is rock solid. This is going to be fantastic. Now certainly you can scale this up or scale this down. Not everyone's going to need a vise quite this big to be handling 48 inch long blades like this. But I still think that making it big enough to be able to handle your typical handsaw, your 26 inch or even a 28 inch handsaw is a really good idea because it's really the only vice 
you'll ever need. Now, it's not as, as compact as my Gramercy vise in the background. Um, I can't really mount it on, uh, on, a, on a bench. I suppose I could, I could mount this somehow, but it makes the design a lot more complex. This just pulls out, you can stick it in the corner of your shop and move on. Um, really outstanding. Now, the one thing I'll say, this being as big as this is, it requires me to have two vices to clamp it. Not everyone's gonna have both a leg vise and a sliding leg vise. It could work just as well in a twin screw vise like I have on my joinery bench. This vise, the way it is, is a little too big. It wouldn't fit between the screws of my, my joinery bench, but I could still fit a 25 inch saw vise in between those screws, and that's gonna handle most of the saws I'm gonna run into. So scale it up, scale it down to your needs. If you see a frame saw in your future, you can see I've got the full 48 inch blade here. I can get all but maybe 10 of the teeth. I'll only have to adjust this once and you can see just how easy that is. The leather grips it real nice, holds it for you to tighten it up and you're right back to work. So here is my monster Franken vise. I think it's gonna serve me very well for sharpening these blades and all of my longer saw blades now and in the future. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.